discipline, courage, success, endurance. Strength, kindness, courage, humble. Spot Barber Academy, June 19, 2023. Intentional conversations with community leaders. Getting real about race, relationships, but most importantly, the human resource. Let's go. What's on your mind? Juneteenth, trauma, racism, humanity, the realities. We are now about to have an on-location conversation here at the Spot Barber Academy in Doral with Dr. Manushka St. Teal. We're so excited to be here today, but most importantly, let's have a real and raw conversation. Dr. St. Teal, thank you here on Freedom Day for being here with me. Thank you so much for having me. When I first met you, you were on the stage talking to a group of young men and families, and you were so encouraging because you just talked about just, you thank those who mentor. Correct. You address the reality of just mental wellness. Let, let's start there and let's reflect back first of all. Uh, so thank you again for being here. 1863 Emancipation Proclamation. No one should be enslaved in the United States of America. 1865, there's still people thinking that well, they were enslaved and they were told June 19th, 1865, you are free. How do you pivot mentally from that type of trauma? The impact of slavery in our communities is intergenerational. And it is something that we will continue to experience unless we start having the conversations of what trauma looks like then and what trauma looks like now. We have to start bridging the gap and understanding everything that happened to our ancestors directly impact how we exist today. Our perception of life, our perception of freedom, our perception of what is truly ours versus what is allowed, what is given, you know, and not knowing how to live within your birthright. That is a learned behavior. And we can see the impact of that on our young people, not knowing who they are, what they represent, and how that impacts them socially and emotionally, and how they show up in the world. They don't know who they are. So we don't know what we don't know. And the slaves back then didn't know they were free. And we have people now that don't know that they are free from their mind and their mind and their bodies. There's just so many ailments within our community that we have to start having these conversations of how trauma is intergenerational and how it is impacting us here today. And when you don't know and you don't realize your worth, your intrinsic value, you'll accept just about anything, won't you? Right, it goes back to living within your birthright. I often talk to parents and they talk about not spoiling their children. And so I, I, I struggle with that because what is spoiling your child when you are giving them the things that are within their birthright? <laughs> A good education, they're going to school, they're 16, it's time for them to learn how to drive, you give them a car, they're able to have money in their pocket. Like, what are we telling our children? Like, you work so hard to give your children all of these things. Our, our, our ancestors have worked so hard for us to be at this point. And we're standing on the shoulders of our ancestors, but yet we're pulling our children back because we don't want to give them too much. Too much of what? Freedom? You know, so we have to examine what life looks like for us right now and, and really and have a conversation about what we need our children to know about who they were because we're not having enough of those conversations. And, and speaking of just birthright, uh, our children, uh, expectations, when I think about just mental health, 
And I go back to where I grew up, inner city Toledo, Ohio. Where I grew up, uh, in the, my context personally, a mother and a grandmother that raised me. And there was so much fear. Don't upset anybody. And so that fragility of just, okay, let me just stay in my lane. And so don't, don't speak up. But then mental health, the stigmas of that within the black community, when you look at the historical trauma, that the reality, and we always want to move forward, we always want to be positive, want to be solution focused, but let's deal with the reality of the trauma and the stigma of mental health. Talk to us about that. So everything that has been introduced into the black community has been introduced out of compliance. So we aren't given the opportunity and the tools because of you know being proactive and wanting to give us things that we deserve and that we're entitled to you know when you introduce therapy into the community it's because of compliance a mother has lost her child and now she has to go through the court and go through therapy and go through these services and finish these services in order for her to prove that she is a worthy mother you come out of jail and now you have to go through anger management like everything is it was introduced out of compliance we were never presented with therapy as something to be proactive as um, for us to kind of take care of ourselves and you know make sure we are whole and our mental health is you know working right we were always just told that you do this because there's something wrong with you what about if we do this just because we want you to get to know who you are, we want you to understand the human mind and how it works, understanding the science of how your body functions, understanding that you know depression is a disease and it's something that can be passed on and there are things that you can be, do about it, understanding that anxiety is a disease, alcoholism, like all of the things that are actual diseases instead of it saying like it's just who you are you are depression and so you will never believe that you can move past that you are trauma so then you feel like you can never move past that so if we treat mental health like a med like the medical form right because we know that it's something we need to seek help with and i use this analogy when i was talking to the young men we all know what it looks like when somebody's walking around with a broken leg right if you if somebody walks in here and they have a broken leg and they sit down to speak to you would you just carry on with the conversation and act like nothing is happening no you would not do that but with mental health we ignore the signs and symptoms we are so programmed to see the physical ailments and we know what a broken bone looks like and we know where to go to get that address we will take that person to the medical hospital and get that address but with mental health you, we will just sit here and let that person struggle with their anxiety, struggle with their depression, struggle with their bipolar, schizophrenic. These things aren't being addressed in our community because we're afraid of what we're going to find out. But when we think about if we are afraid, to your point, of what we're going to find out, and then based on adverse childhood experiences, based on the trauma, unchecked, un, you know, non-mitigated trauma, then there's a school shooting. Then there's violence in various areas within our, then we trace it back to, oh, there was an issue back then. So we can't have it both ways. So as we look, as we move forward, as we think about what, was not, what we were not included in in the first place, now we have this, uh, this stigma now that, okay, I'll treat the broken leg immediately after a football game or during a game, if you will. How do we encourage communities of color to be, to recognize the importance of getting something checked out at the earliest possible stage. Right. I think we first have to help them realize that they are of value. Yes. That you, like your wellness matters. You showing up as a able-bodied person is the same thing as you showing up as a mentally stable person. Right, we have to put these things on the same um, playing field and make people understand. Like we want you to get better, and this is important for us. And understanding the science of what that means, and not 
continuing the stigma that you're just crazy just because. Let's have a conversation that your father suffered from mental health and your great-grandfather suffered from mental health and maybe this is something that we might pass on genetically and here are some things that we can do to ensure that this doesn't happen to you and if it does happen to you there are some medications that you can take over time that you will eventually get better I think we don't ever believe that there is a silver lining that will ever get better we don't believe in getting better traumatic and that's the trauma of the black community we don't believe that we'll ever get better. So why even try? We are literally, like I said, if we really wanna have, let's take this all the way back from slavery until now, and the things that are ailing our communities are directly correlated with the experiences that our ancestors had and have passed on. So Freedom Day, here we are Juneteenth, 2023, June 19th, 2023, as we think about, yes just recently acknowledged. So, but we, as a people, need to have these intentional conversations because we can laugh and joke about, oh, uncle just crazy, mm -hmm. auntie just crazy, and then generation upon generation. So we have an opportunity to break the generational cycle. Correct, and it's important. I think it was President Obama that said that we are the change that we've been waiting for. We, and within our community, we're constantly waiting for someone to come and save us. We're waiting for someone else to do the work. And I think it's time for us to realize that we're it. This is it, tag your it. What are the pieces to the, what pieces of the puzzle do you hold? What contribution can you make to our society to ensure that we are moving the needle? And so it begins with more mental health professionals. It begins with conversations like that because everybody's looking for the big stage. Start with your stage. Start with the community that you're directly connected to and start having those conversations and making the differences in the lives of the mentors and the mentees that you interact with. It has to start with you. We just have to do it. Speaking of mentors uh, and as we uh, reflect on the past uh, as we look to the future. Who's been some of the, or name one of the mentors that's impacted your life? Oh, wow. I have had so many women that have poured into me because I am first generation from Haiti, uh, born in Haiti, raised here. And so a lot of the things that I experienced in Fort Lauderdale, Florida was for the first time. So if it wasn't for the educators, I could say Miss Linda Thomas, um, she was a assistant principal at the time. She saw me, you know, and I think, I believe she was Bahamian. Um, I think it was important because she saw me, you know, she, she, when she saw me, she saw herself. And so therefore she took a vested interest in, uh, in helping me understand and navigate this terrain called the United States of America because my parents only could, they were only concerned with working, putting food on the table and keeping a roof over our head. That was their priority. They didn't understand everything else that entail with raising children in the United States, tutoring, homework, field trips, extracurricular activities, you know, treating the, you know, taking care of the whole child. So I would definitely say Linda Thomas, she really poured into me. I can remember her reading my speech for, um, I was senior class president and she read my speech and she just, con she was a constant in my life and she was there at my graduation for my bachelor's, my master's. She has just definitely been a constant. She wasn't there for my doctorates, but definitely Linda Thomas. Um, I've had dance instructors, um, Diana Dunbar, um, that took an interest in me. I, I always tell the educators, you do not know how much you can change, how, how many lives you can change, the impact of your interaction with students. And so if education is not it for you, please find another place to be because those children are literally waiting and sitting at your feet and, and, and waiting for that guidance and instruction because they might not have that grown up that can guide them. And it's not that my parents didn't want to guide me, they didn't have the know-it-all. They did not know. And so 
um, this is really a call to those educators just ensuring that you are paying attention to every single child that you come into that you interact with you you might not necessarily um, hold their hands but acknowledge them see them and that acknowledgement Haitian immigrant coming to the United States of America and the power of the, your words I was seen when a child feels like they're invisible nobody understands me no one sees me they act like I'm not even here and sometimes that starts at home unfortunately too often it's within their own personal network and, and to your point most of the time I when I work with my clients you know you take the whole psychosocial and we start with we start with your relationship with your parents and so most of the trauma that our children experience is because of the relationship with their parents because the first person in your life that is going to teach you how to love unconditionally is your parents and so in the absence of that you are literally building the plane as you fly you don't know what you're looking for you don't know what you're modeling so you are starting with a foundation that does not exist with which is why I say it is so important for you to take care of your four walls your children are your first assignment yes work is important everything else comes secondary because the reason you are working is to provide for your children the reason that you are going to church and volunteering your time is to ensure that there's a a place for them to go like it, everything is centered around the family so if we just focus on one family at a time like you won't focus on your four walls you would you will inform the adult that you present to the world and so it is very important parents 0 to 18 years old that's all you have them for they have 18 to 99 to be adults so you have 0 to 18 years old to ensure that you do your due diligence and you parent those children because they did not ask to be here and so therefore that responsibility that that torch that you have to carry for that child I want you to take it seriously because whatever you do within those 18 years will inform the adult that you present to the world and you might not like what you give the world freedom talk on freedom day you talked about the the children and so we talk about your mentors those who saw you and impacted you those powerful women that saw you mentorship it's importance mm -hmm. in the mental health space correct correct it's important for you to take a vested interest in, in another human being I think um, Eric Erickson talks about the psychosocial stages of development and it talks about what we do throughout our life stages and at some point in your life you do take on the ownership of guiding the next generation um, so it is part of that kind of science um, that we talk about and it's important that once you get to that point that you own it you know some people run from it and they're like why is this all of a sudden my sudden interest and I want to spend time with children no own it sit in that psychosocial stage of development and mentor another child or another individual because it's part it's the cycle of life if we just kind of like follow the science sometimes we would probably be better off you know and as we look back here we are, June 19th, 2023. What does Juneteenth mean to you and your you know, ownership? And I love, what, I love what you said, own it. I can make an impact. And so you're clearly making an impact here in South Florida. We're gonna do some th a lot of things together in the big brothers, big sister space. And there's no doubt, but that's just your, your world, your network, your ownership. Juneteenth, what does it mean to you? Juneteenth means a period of time where we are acknowledged and seen as people, where the country where we gave so much of who we are actually stopped to acknowledge us as people and give us the rights and freedom across the board like everybody else it was the, it was a period of being seen and it goes back to like you said as being a Haitian immigrant not being seen our people were seen and that's I think that's all we ever want as humans and as black Americans and Caribbean Americans and African Americans we just want to be seen and be acknowledged in this space because we worked hard to be here too 
and we want to be part of this experience. It's a collective experience. There is the human experience that we all must be a part of, and it's about being seen. And I and I and I and I talk about I didn't learn about my history until later on going to college because as you know when you're Caribbean Afro American I mean American there's not a lot of information sharing of what actually happened in the United States during that time so my parents didn't have that information to pass on to me it was through my own reading and research and college and interaction with different groups that I truly understood what Juneteenth was, what emancipation was, what freedom was. You know, just coming here and I think it was 1985 when we first came here. I think about how we moved to Sixth Street and five years later, my parents immediately bought a home in Melrose Park. And in our mind, we couldn't figure out why the people that we lived there with for five years stayed there because we didn't know anything about redlining. We didn't understand what was happening before we came, that the work that they were doing paved the way for these Caribbean um, Afro families to come in and now move on the other side of the tracks. We need to know the labor that the other people have put in before us. and so. I just think about all of the things that have happened in order for me to be who I am. It was just, it was a labor of love. It was a collective experience. And I am not, I don't have a doctor's in psychology because it was just something to do. It is out of respect and homage to my mom and my, the ancestors and everybody that came before me. Like I always say, like I'm not supposed to be here. I wasn't born in this country, but since I'm here, I am going to give of myself. We have to be people of service. I think we just get caught up in just doing ourselves and we don't realize that we are supposed to be of service. So I am here to be of service. Um, and that's kind of what I've kind of learned over the years of doing this work. The families that I serve, I tell my clients, I'm here to serve you. You're not a client, you're not a patient. I am here of service. Messaging matters. Speaking of message, I want you to uh, talk to all those who are mentoring, all those bigs out there that are serving our littles, uh, and just talk, just give them a little bit of Juneteenth encouragement. Those who have taken time out to own it through mentorship, talk to them. Mentoring is just a part of our existence. You know, it kind of goes back to, you know, making sure that we pave the way for the next generation by acknowledging the next generation. I often talk about in some of the lectures that we are coexisting with five generations now, you know, and there's this generation war happening where I'm saying that you're better than me and this generation doesn't listen. Like we have this infighting and we're all having the same exact experiences that we would just talk about it. And that's what mentoring is. It's the generations before you having a real conversation with the generations that's coming to just explain like this is what I've experienced these are the things that I would have done differently these are the things that I have charted for you um, it's a conversation that has to happen you have to take time out to realize that if you don't mentor the next generation if you think that that's somebody else's job then who's going to do it own the part that you can own. I always say there are things that, with, that are within our reach. So volunteering is within our reach. Being kind is a, something within our reach. There are things that we can still control. Of course, there are so many things that are out of our control. You know, watching the news, it can make you a little crazy, but there are so many things within our control and mentoring is one of them. And it doesn't have to be this grand scale. It, it could be as simple as deciding to go to the local Boys and Girls Club. It could be volunteering at the school, just making sure that you give back because if you've never had a mentor, can you imagine who you would have been if you did? So making sure that nobody goes without. That's what it's all about. And speaking of the thank yous, speaking of ownership, thank you for owning it. I see you, sister. And uh, not only do I see you, I feel your impact. Uh, so thank you for spending some quality time with us on this Juneteenth. 2023 and helping us and just encouraging us to be better within our own space because if we take care of those four walls the community is a better place we appreciate you sister
What's on your mind? On this Juneteenth, we all can do something. We all can make a big impact through mentorship, through being kind, but most importantly, seen, not invisible, because we, we, let's go.